Now that we know how PlaceTray works as a normal envelope generator, let's look at some of its expanded functions of what you can do with those. I set myself up a very nice, simple attack release here, with a nice log attack, exponential release. Go for a short time here. And the first thing we're going to play around with is voltage control over these rise and fall times. There are three input jacks for voltage control over those inputs. Two of the jacks have lines that go straight to the knobs. That basically says this jack will behave the same as this knob. Higher voltage would be like turning it clockwise. Lower voltage is like turning it counterclockwise. So let's say we wanted to set something up where velocity on our keyboard affected the decay time, where a low velocity put very little energy into the note, so we got a very short release, and high velocity put more energy into the note and gave us a longer release. Velocity is mapped to output number three over there on my FH1. It can go both positive and negative in the case of this module. So I'm going to take that velocity output and run it to the jack that's connected to my decay or release time or fall time. This way, when I play a low velocity note, I get a very fast release, not much energy. But when I play a high velocity note, I get a very long release time. This means you can go ahead and articulate each note independently, either by the way that you play, or the way you program something like an arpeggio, because I can go ahead and do something with the soft note, and the high velocity note, and maybe with the medium velocity note. I think voltage control over envelope times is something that's underused, by the way, in modular synth. You get so much more articulation and make it behave more like an instrument by taking advantage of that feature. You could also take advantage of other controls to go ahead and change that release time. For example, I have some controls here. They can be positive or negative voltages. You'll see jack number six changing over there. So instead, I'm going to plug into jack number six, set up an arpeggio. Use six to go ahead and go long decay or short decay. And of course, you can do the same with attack time on the other jack. But you notice that there's this third jack with a musical note next to it. This jack is special. It applies to both attack and decay times, and it responds in the opposite fashion that these two jacks do. The reason is, is if you were to use this as an oscillator, the higher note you played, the shorter you'd want the rise and fall times to be to create a shorter cycle waveform, therefore something higher in pitch. But it's also useful for other features such as mapping my keyboard voltage to the attack and decay times of my note. Quite often with acoustic instruments like pianos, high notes are supposed to have a shorter decay than low notes. The standard patch are all the same, but here if I go ahead and take my um, keyboard pitch out, I've got another copy here on my V scale, run that to the note input, the one that goes to both, behaves in the opposite fashion. Now my high notes give me short envelopes, and low notes give me longer envelopes. Again, more like an acoustic instrument. Let's go ahead and make a wide-ranging arpeggio again. Another way to get more articulation into your playing, whether it's an arpeggio, sequence, or what you're playing with your hands. Unfortunately, there's no voltage control over the shapes. And frankly, that's not that much use when you're using it as an envelope generator. It's more use when you're using it as an LFO or VCO. But just having that control over release time, and of course, attack time, is very useful. All right, let's look at some other features. As I mentioned, there's multiple outputs in this module, including these end of attack or end of rise time and end of release, or end of fall time. I can use this to start combining the two halves of this envelope generator to create more complex envelope shapes. Initially, I'm going to mix external to this module, but it also has some internal mixing capabilities, which are quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both my green half here and my yellow half, mix them externally, 
take a copy of that back in, put that on the blue channel of data, just so you can see what the composite voltage looks like. Now I'll take that output and run it to my filter cutoff. Finally, I'm gonna take another copy of my gate from my keyboard and use that to go ahead and trigger the green half as well. And again, I want the input jack that's closest to the manual trigger button, not the one that's directly underneath or above the mode switch. That gives us that auto wah, -wah effect. I'll go over here instead, the one with the arrow is saying that's an input. And let's just for starters, make them both attack decay envelopes. Now I play a note. You'll see that we have both the green and yellow envelope shapes. Let's go ahead and slow down the green further. So I have the fast pluck of my instant attack on the yellow side. And then the much slower rise on the green side. Let's go ahead and give that a nice swell. And a nice exponential release. time here. Now I can mix these externally to say maybe give the green portion the additional swell a less prominent part of this combined envelope. Or I can take advantage of the tenure vert right here. Maybe even set this into attack sustain release mode. Now the slight problem with using an external mixer is both of these envelopes are already going zero to 10 volts if I haven't turned them down on the attenuator stage. Mix them externally, we could be clipping the maximum voltage level inside your rack, particularly if they have very similar attack times where they swell together. Go ahead and sustain the yellow side. And you see where the positive voltage clips out immediately. A nice trick Fleestree has is this max function. It takes the maximum voltage either on green or yellow, and outputs just that. And again, some people call that an analog OR. So I'm gonna take this mixer out of the equation for now, and instead take that analog OR output, and plug that into the blue channel, which now goes to my filter cutoff. Set this back to AD mode. So you see where the blue composite output is falling until it reaches the green level, and then the green level takes over. They're not adding together, it's taking the highest contour. I'll turn on the green's contribution. That's how to turn it into an attack decay sustained release generator. Right now I'm triggering both the green and yellow halves at exactly the same time. However, I can take advantage of these end of rise and end of fall triggers to stagger the timing. So one of these fires after the other one does. To do that, I no longer want to take my green trigger from my keyboard, but instead I want to take it from the yellow channel. Let's say after the attack is done. So if I do a slow swelling attack, envelope will not start to rise until after the yellow is done. So I get again very swelling effects, but with more of a delay. Longer attack time on green channel. Now as soon as the attack stage is done, it's letting go of release on green, and that's why we're going into fall on the green side. As soon as the release is hit zero, now the green is released. The other alternative is the end of fall time, which says don't start the green side until the yellow side is completely finished. End of fall stays high whenever we're not re-attacking the yellow channel, that's why the green output's staying high. Make this a quick attack to get something a little pluckier. Longer release on the green side. 
maximum level mix, or just a small contribution. So you have different ways of coordinating the green and yellow sides to get more complex envelope shapes. In fact, Felicity has its own complex mode called Q, or quadrature mode. What quadrature basically does is, first, the yellow channel rises. When that's done, the green channel rises. When the green's rise is done, then the yellow channel falls. And when the yellow's done falling, then the green's allowed to fall. For that to work, green must be in sustain mode. You don't need any external triggering. That's done for you when you get to that Q switch. And it is a tight fit, so sometimes I go in and use a little plug tip to switch over to Q mode for me. And again, I'm using the OR output to go ahead and combine the two to take the highest voltage. Longer attack on green. This is another way of coordinating the envelopes to create more complex shapes, or when we start playing around with LFO modes, and go ahead and get some automatic cycling. We'll go into a lot more detail about that towards the end of the next movie. So, in addition to the voltage control attack release times, which we talked about earlier, this gives you some ideas about how you can combine two halves and create more complex shapes. But so far I've been playing it as one shot from the keyboard. As you saw with that last example, there's a lot of possibilities using this as an LFO, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the next movie.